How do you run your internet empire? Well, you need a really killer iPhone or iPad app to start up your servers and manage them. And today we're going to talk to Rackspace Cloud and OpenStack about their new iOS app. Who are you? I am Mike Mayo, and I'm the mobile apps developer for Rackspace and the OpenStack project. Very cool. Uh, you've been on our show before, and you showed us the first version of the uh, iPad app. Yeah, that it's you been built. a year. <laughs> and so I guess you've been busy. Yes, for the last year, I've been learning a lot more about iOS development. Uh, we also built an Android app to control uh, your cloud servers. Um, and yeah, so it's been a year, and on the same day that the new iPad comes out, our new 2.0 app comes out. Very cool, so it's 2.0 day. Yeah, exactly. And in the background, you might hear a bird, so we're at the uh, USVP <laughs> yeah, offices. Yeah, th those are uh, angry birds. <laughs> and it's fun to be at the USVP offices because a lot of entrepreneurs use your app to build their internet empire mm -hmm. and spin up servers and start doing stuff. But you can do a lot more with that app than uh, a year ago, right? Yes, uh, with this one, uh, we stepped back and fully implemented everything in the API. Um, before, we, we were mostly just trying to hurry up and get an app out in time for launch day. Um, this time, we spent more time on it. Um, we give you more control of your cloud servers, better control of your cloud files, uh, better ways to access cloud files. You can now um, open them, print them, stream media to an Apple TV, pretty much everything that, that you could possibly pull off on the iPad. If you have an app that open some particular file format, like say an Excel document, it'll let you open it in that, say in numbers or whatever, if it's available. Um, so yeah, we've just uh, covered everything. So, And we also um, allow you to talk to um, our clouds in the US and UK and any OpenStack cloud that you may have installed. Whereas a year ago, we only had US cloud. Very cool. So, Who should be uh, downloading this app? Uh, sysadmins who want to have a life. So. <laughs> The, the best use for this is if, you, if you're a sysadmin controlling uh, resources on our cloud, um, get this app and then something like ISSH and then you have everything you need what, to... What is ISSH? ISSH is an SSH client for iOS. It's also a universal app for iPhone and iPad. And with that, you can log into the server and run any sort of commands you need to run. So things that would be a bit out of scope for, for the Rackspace Cloud API. So, so what you could do with this app is you could look at a server from our app, launch an SSH client, and then go in and say restart MySQL specifically. Whereas if SSH is down with our app, you can reboot the server itself so that it'll you know go down and then come back up and restart all of the services like SSH. Wow. The first time you showed me the app, you, you showed me uh, starting a Linux box up or a Linux instance up with MySQL whatnot in a couple minutes. It's even... It's faster and better now. So now um, we look at your API rate limit and allow you to make as many servers as you can at once. Before you saw me make, make you know one cloud server. Now um, with most accounts, I can make ten at a time. So I can make ten servers at once. It'll name them like if I say name it web server. It'll name it web server one, two, three, four, and so on. So I can make ten of them at once. And if I am using Chef. Um, I can include my chef recipes to to have the server install the software on itself and configure itself. What chef? Because most most people might so some people might not know that that's watching. The chef thing. is a, a configuration automation tool created by Opscode. Um, it, it's written in Ruby and basically, like when you if you're starting a site, you uh, need to spend a lot of time like installing a web server database. Your app server, all, all the different things you're going to need. It, it usually could take you know, several hours to configure a single server. And with Chef, you write that configuration in Ruby, and then when you launch the server, you just say, run this Ruby script, basically. Yeah. So I have recipes for a LAMP stack, Apache, MySQL, you know, that sort of thing. And I just say, LAMP. And then when the server comes up, it installs everything and sets itself up for me. So I have a running web app server in seconds. It's wow. pretty awesome. Can you do that programmatically? Can you write code to say, well, if the server's getting overloaded, can you start up another one and start, you know? You certainly could do that. Um, you would, 
Yeah, I mean, Chef is, it's, it's in Ruby, so you can basically do anything. So um, that wouldn't be something you would do with the iPad. You would perhaps have some sort of process running on another server that watches the servers, and then when it's time to scale, automatically scale it. Um, I think a lot of people are doing that. Um, but for people who aren't, and say you're out at a bar, and you're the sysadmin, and your traffic's spiking, you can open up your iPhone, just add a few web servers yeah. with Chef, and multiple create. The iPhone and the iPad ver apps are uh, functionally the same. You can do exactly the same stuff. On yes, both yes. Ones. It's feature for feature. It's a universal app. Whereas with the last one, we had an iPhone app and an iPad app. We ended up with a bit of feature disparity. So like I added multiple account support to the iPad and then everyone who had iPhone wanted it. Yeah. Or, you know, something might have been an iPhone that wasn't an iPad. And now, now it's, it's level across the board. Okay. And saves and it saves us time, too, because we're not developing two separate apps. So now we can roll out new features faster. Got it. So you have one code base that builds both apps? That's right. And it's open source, too. It's uh, yeah. part of the OpenStack project. And it's, uh, if you go to openstack.org and go into Launchpad, which is, our, which is where we store the code, um, the iOS app is there. Oh, so if cool. you want to contribute. Lots of people might be wondering, why, why is an infrastructure company like Rackspace focusing on iPad and iPhone? Are, are, are people really using these devices to manage their cloud infrastructure? Oh yeah, this is um, quite a popular app. It's, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it's about 30% of our user base um, has, has the apps. So um, I don't have usage numbers, but I think they're pretty high. And it's, it's just a really easy way to do it. It's, it's quicker and easier than doing it even on a web browser. So Why is that? Um, well, partially because you know, I save your login information, so you don't have to go through the login process. Um, the iOS UI metaphor, metaphors, the whole like iOS experience is so intuitive that you can get to things faster via like Apple style controls than you can with a typical web app. It's, it's just, it just makes sense. Like, whereas with a web app, you're gonna look around and try and figure out, all right, where's, how do I get to my servers? How do I do this? Whereas it's super intuitive on this. The app is free? Yes, it's what? yeah, it's free. And it comes out next Friday, same day as the iPad too. Well, this video will come out on the same day, oh, so okay. it's available now, right? <laughs> okay, it's available now. <laughs> um, <laughs> go download it and look yes. for Rackspace Cloud in the iTunes store. Yes, and, and one thing people should note is if you have the old iPad app, it's gonna replace that. So this is gonna come out as an upgrade for the iPhone users and nothing for the iPad users. So the iPad users will need to go download this app. Oh. Because before, the iPad was a separate app from the iPhone, and now this is 2.0 of the iPhone app. Got it. So and then the, the old iPad app will be removed from the App Store. Oh, that's a good point. Um, take me through the home screen. What's on the home screen? Yeah, in the home screen, you can, you can manage multiple accounts in US, UK, or a custom one. You can configure Chef, a passcode lock. Um, this is something. One thing we didn't do before was allow people to delete servers, and a lot of people asked for that. So as a bit of a test, I've added delete servers to our Android app, and people complained about it because, you know, their, say their daughter could go and wipe out their infrastructure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in this case, we've added a passcode lock, and you can lock it down. You can even make it, like, wipe the app. If, you, if someone fails logging in 10 times, it'll erase everything so that they'll never be able to get to it. Wow. So yeah, okay. tr trying to think about everything. Uh, and, th and then when you go into your account, you can get to your cloud servers, files, um, eventually load balancers, but that's not available yet. You can read the system status feeds. Um, uh, you can contact Rackspace. If, if you're on a phone, you can actually call the support number. So if you're having a problem, you don't have to look up the phone number on the website. You just go to the app and it's right there. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you have the Twitter account we yes. have a team watching the Twitter account most of the day, and uh, they get back to people in minutes. Right. Yeah, I find, I find Twitter to be my new favorite way to interact with support for companies. So, so yeah, it'll link directly to Twitter, uh, the Rackspace Twitter account. And does it show? So, also, if, uh, <coughs> if something is massively wrong in the infrastructure, we tweet it, right? And we yeah, keep we, people up to date, so it shows the Twitter stream? Right. Well, it doesn't show the Twitter stream, ah, so okay. it'll send you to the account on the Twitter app. But we also, I mean, we tweet about it, but we also put it in our system status feeds. There are multiple ways to find out if something's going wrong. And if you can't log in because the API is down, it doesn't lock you out. You can still get to this information. So, so you can see everything in the app, whether you're 
whether the cloud is down or not. So some sys sysadmins and some companies build apps or yeah build apps um, build internet things for many different companies. So I might have a you know company A that's a that's a restaurant. Or I might be a restaurant company, I might have a, a website for restaurant A, restaurant mm -hmm. B, restaurant C, restaurant D. Right. Can I build a template so that I can easily start up servers for new restaurants? Uh, the best way to do that would be, well there's two ways. One, you could use Chef and uh, have a Chef recipe for your restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, you could also take a snapshot, like if you take one of your restaurant web servers, back it up, you can launch new servers based on that backup. So that's. In, in essence, a template as well. So you can do it with Chef or via via backup images. Very cool. Any last things that you want us to know about the app or that you'd like people to try out when they get the app? If you have an Apple TV, this is a really fun thing to show off. Uh, iOS 4.3 is out today as well, um, and it adds AirPlay support for apps. And I knew What is AirPlay uh, for people who don't know that? So AirPlay is wireless streaming of media uh, from your iOS device to or a Mac to an Apple TV. So I have an Apple TV at home hooked up to my big screen and surround sound system. And if I have media, like audio or video in cloud files, I can look at it in the app and stream it to my Apple TV. So what's really cool is uh, with my iPhone 4, the camera is actually pretty decent quality. I film home movies of my dog running around and from the Rackspace app and then upload it to cloud files. So I know it's backed up in the cloud multiple times over, and then I stream it out to the big screen TV. We watch the dog run around. Wow, it's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> the new iPad 2 coming out today as well has cameras. Yes, so you can do that with a camera. Yes, it should work on the iPad 2. I haven't seen an iPad 2 yet. I will at five o'clock today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it has I guess front and back cameras, and the app looks. It doesn't say is this an iPad. It says does this device have a camera? If so, allow the person to film video. So it should work with iPad too. Okay. So where do I find you online? I'm on Twitter. Uh, my handle is Greenasis, and I have a blog at overheard.com, which is O-V-E-R-H-R-D.com, and I'm also blogging at the Rackspace Cloud. Very blog. cool. So. Well, thanks for showing me the app, and uh, Thank thanks you. for bringing us great stuff for uh, managing our infrastructure. Yeah, I appreciate it.